I'm so low key about it. And he's always asking me like, was that even cool to you? You don't even look like you're you <laughs> like no emotion. That. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's like when you talk to them, it's, they're just normal people. And you know, there's, it's not like they're celebrities. I mean, Nick Saban, but like, it was still like just normal conversation with him. So yeah, I'm, I'm really the one that gets yeah. starstruck. Sure. And yeah. just like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. <clears throat> um, like just what, three weeks ago, he got offered by University of Michigan, right? One of the most storied programs in college history. And mm-hmm. oh. do you feel like your how, how do you feel like your your parents have helped you in this process? What's your perspective on that? Like, do you feel like this is the route you would have gone regardless? Do you feel like your parents have helped influence you and kind of given you opportunities and whether it was financial resources or better coaches or whatever it may be. Do you, how do you feel like your parents have influenced your ability to progress in sports? Yeah, for sure. And when I played baseball, I was always, he always had like a talk with me, like every other month it felt like about, you got to do other extra work, not just practice. You know, you remember those just like mm-hmm. all the time. And I just didn't do it because I didn't, I just, kind of was falling out of love with baseball and yeah and then because of coaches yeah. so do you okay. feel like todd when when you were going through those things and sorry to cut you off but todd when you were because i'm actually going through this with my son right now he's just obsessed with soccer he loves it but i'm telling him all that stuff at the same time so do you feel like as you're telling uh brock these things and maybe didn't see him listening how did it make you feel during the did you feel like well, i think he's he's playing that down a little bit he i would tell him and he would go out and he would yeah. swing yeah um and he would do the things we, um, we had him a, a catcher. He was a great catcher. Um, no doubt in my mind, he'd be a draft pick in baseball. Yeah. If he, if he had played, um, but got him a coach, a, a catching coach and, and he would do th- He would do it. Yeah. Right. So he's always been that, that guy. And, and, uh, after his freshman year, um, uh, last year, um, there was a all American, um, freshman, freshman, all American through Adidas, and and you had to send in their tape, and I was like, I, and I follow, and I followed this stuff pretty fanatically because I'd like to see what you know, how does he stack up against these guys, and so I sent his tape in, and and he got the invite to go down to Florida and play in this all American game, and he had never played tight end before, and um, so he's out there practicing. It was like the um, it was five day five day camp. And then there was a big game and, um, he was one of the only kids that didn't have an offer already. So these were some dudes that he was yeah. playing against. And, mm-hmm. um, my wife and I, Andrea, we were kind of worried, like, man, is, is he good enough to be against these guys? And, and we were standing the, or actually sitting in the stands and, uh, these two coaches come over the fence and they're like, who's Brock Harris's parents. And we're like, Oh no. They're going to tell us to go home. <laughs> and uh, uh, raise our hand. They, he said, come on down here. And so uh, they just say, hey, we just want you to know that your son is just an awesome kid. And we love him. He's so coachable. And um, and not only that, nobody can stop him. And we're like, what? So anyway, that's wow. kind of where the whole yeah. thing started. And, and when after the game, there was a, a tweet by a writer for ESPN that said, um, the best tight end we've seen come through here. No wow. way. It's yeah. awesome. And, and that's kind of where he blew up as far as all of a sudden coach started, you know, Hey, will you come play on our seven on seven team? And we do this and this, this and camps and all this stuff. And, um, that's kind of where it all started. So. Yeah. So it seems, so it seems like, you know, Brock, obviously your parents invest in put, putting you in that camp. That was a big thing. So, I mean, to follow up on the question that I asked about, do you feel like your parents have had a lot of influence in helping you those things? It seems like your dad has helped you do things after practice or whatever, oh, whatever yeah. it may be, but then also yeah. invest in putting you in camps and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. How have you felt about that? Have you realized those things or have you just been like, oh, well, my dad wants me to do so I'm going to go do it. Oh, no, for sure. With whatever I do, I think yeah. they're they're there and they've invested in me a lot. I think yeah. with we've done, we've done, I don't know, I can't even remember how many camps we've done this year just traveling a ton, all the flights and things. And we've had some help with, um, this company that we're with, but still the, yeah, for sure. They, they've helped so much with everything. And I, for sure, it doesn't go over my head at all. Yeah. It's awesome. Now there's, there's quite a few years between now and when you go to college, mm-hmm. right? So during this, this time, what are some things that you are 
um, I guess focused on obviously getting better and all that is, is part of it. But, you know, how do you make sure you stay healthy, you stay injury free? Is there a mindset with that? Are there things that, and precautions you take? Because there's always risk, right? There's risk mm-hmm. as, a, as an athlete, especially in football yeah. of getting injured potentially. Right. And mm-hmm. you've got all these offers and people. So what, what, uh, what do you do? What do you, what do you do between now and then to continue to improve and get better? So that when you go to college, mm-hmm. you're on the top of your game. Coaches, every time we have a call, they always just say, just keep doing what you're doing. And so that's, that's really what I'm doing. I'm, I want to, I'm kind of focusing a lot on just, um, uh, molding into that tight end type stance. Cause uh-huh. that's what they want me as. And I'm more, I've, is that because of your season. height and your, you'll put on the mass yeah, as you they, get, yeah, yeah, they say I have the frame for it. And yeah. So I, I, yeah, gaining that weight and getting in tight end stance blocking is a big thing blocking way bigger guys than like corners and stuff that i would be blocking okay so, so yeah okay he's, what, he's extremely in. agile extremely coordinated great your mobility is good yeah, you stretch a lot i mean things like yeah, that yeah yeah so if he was if if he wasn't 6'6 225 pounds and he was six one he'd be an unbelievable receiver you yeah. know right i mean he's a, he runs great routes and and he works on that, um, but really, the over the next, um, I guess, three years, basically, he's just we'll just get him coaching, um, take him wherever he needs to be to get that coaching to where that that will help him get to the next level. Awesome. Um, Talk about what it's like meeting with Nick, Nick Saban and some of the other colleges and, and getting these because colleges, it's different now, right? We, we were talking at dinner there night. It was your birthday dinner. We, we were at the mm-hmm. other night and you were kind of talking about that. And I think that'd be in- interesting for people to hear. Um, college is almost like professional now, yeah. professional yeah. level as far you get, as incentives you get paid, and, too, you right? get paid yeah, and all that stuff. And maybe just, I mean, I don't know if you, what you want to talk about or not talk about on here, but what are some of your thoughts on all these offers and how do you keep it? I guess keep it from getting to your head too big or, yeah. or getting you distracted or, or does it really affect you? It, to be honest, it doesn't really. I, I, I'm so low key about it. And he's always asking me like, was that even cool to you? You don't even look like you're you <laughs> like no emotion. That. Yeah. It's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's like when you talk to them, it's, they're just normal people and you know, there's, it's not like they're celebrities. I mean, Nick Saban, but like, it was still like just normal conversation with him. So yeah, I'm I'm really the one that gets yeah. starstruck. Sure, and yeah. just like oh my gosh, I can't believe this. <clears throat> um, like just what, three weeks ago, he got offered by University of Michigan, right? One of the most storied programs in college history, and mm-hmm. and he's he was asleep, you know, when they when they called, and so I'm waking him up, and and he's he's talking on the phone, you know, and he's like you know, having a good conversation, but. As soon as it's done, he's he just goes back to sleep. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, it's just awesome. no big deal, dude. Right? I yeah. love it, man. Yeah, yeah that's it's, awesome. it is. It is awesome and yeah. because you know there's a lot of kids right now that are seniors that are. I want to get a scholarship, and they're they're trying to do everything they can to get a scholarship, and he doesn't have to do any of that. Right. Right. I mean, he's anymore. But I I think that? anymore. Yeah, anymore. I mean, it's it's set now. People will just come and offer him now, mm-hmm. yeah. where he. You know, and he'll have to try and figure that out. You know, that's going to be a big decision. You know, there'll probably be what I I probably say fifty or so offers by the time he's a senior, and he'll have to narrow that down to ten, and then to five, and then to three, and that's going to be a big decision. And um, it's awesome, it's pretty exciting. So I think you said something that you think he would have been. You know, uh, uh, he he would have made it in baseball or football, regardless of what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes down to mindset. Would you agree with Absolutely. that? So, you know, you're just saying that about getting these offers going right back to sleep. I think that says a lot about your mindset as well. Yeah. Where does this mindset come from? How have you guys developed it? Because to me, what that says is I can go right back to sleep is, Hey, I'm just preparing, doing what I know I need to do yeah. to become the best. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to continue to do those things regardless of who offers me what I'm mm-hmm. just going to continue to be the best I can be. Yeah. Is that kind of how you feel? Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't know why I, I feel like I should be really excited. Like when it happens, I, I do, but yeah. I just keep it in. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, cause it seems I, like you have control over your emotions. Yeah. Yes. Well, I powerful. think there's a, there's a big lesson here. And, and, and what I see is you're in a position where you're ahead of the game, so to speak. Right. 
And I think human nature is when we feel like we're ahead of the game, we're naturally probably more confident Mm -hmm. and we're probably not as maybe starstruck or intimidated by maybe opportunities that are there. For example, the seniors like you're talking about that that need that scholarship, they need it. And so if they get a little offer, they they don't want to blow it. Right. And they're, they're in a different mindset because of that. Right. They're almost in a desperate Mm -hmm. place versus where you're not in a desperate place. Now, I think those that are listening in, in life, I think if we can look at life the same way and go, man, if, if I can set myself up to be ahead, I've, I've always tried to think in my life, I want to be ahead of the game on whatever it is that I'm doing so that I can be in that position where now, look, I still get, I was just talking the other day, we, we have uh, one of our great mentors, Hector Lamarck's going to be on with us one of these next episodes. We're going to record with him on Monday. And I'm a little intimidated because I, I just respect Hector so much. Without Hector Lamarck, there wouldn't be a Brandon Neal lifestyle or a Jeff Fieldstead lifestyle that we have today. So he is that kind of figure in my life. Um, but at the same time, you know, if, if I'm working hard on me and I'm getting ahead of the game, so to speak, so that when those opportunities come, I'm, I'm not in a place where I'm I'm desperate, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I don't know if well, I'm Don't you think that's where the saying, you, you know, it's like it's preparation. You yeah, know, it's like exactly. If, if 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 you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Kind yeah. of mentality, you know. It's, you're ready. You're mm-hmm. doing the right things, and yeah. when the opportunity presents itself, it's not. You're not preparing for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. You are prepared, and then the opportunity presented itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>